so uh, pardon me if this is a long story, but long story long. So um, I get migraines, like a lot of people do, and it's basically from a fucked up neck I have. On the right side, I have some major bulging discs, and on the left side, I have a small bulging disc from a car accident I got in two years ago. So sometimes when I get migraines, um, when I get migraines, it'll all tighten up on my right side. The muscles tighten up and it end up being like that. And then it goes in my forehead and my eye and, oh, it's just excruciating. I've probably never canceled a shoot with you due to it, but I've had to cancel lots of things yeah, due I've, to it. Yeah, I, um, I honestly don't think I've ever gotten a migraine and I cannot imagine what that is like. Yeah. It's not like you could lay on the couch and watch TV. Like yeah. you can't look at anything. You can't hear anything. Yeah. Light, sound. You're just miserable till it passes. Right. So mine usually pass like in a day or, or two at the most. Um. So this time I had a three-day migraine, which was just absolutely miserable. But I, I didn't think anything of it. And then day four, I started getting dizzy. I was on the couch watching TV and I stood up and suddenly the room closed in around me and I looked down at my feet and they seemed like 30 feet away and I was just like, whoa. And to be honest with you, my first thought was, oh my God, I have somehow taken LSD or mushrooms. I don't think there's any in this house. So I ran to my bathroom and went through everything. All I found was vitamins and Tylenol. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right. I didn't accidentally trip myself, dose myself. <laughs> so um, an, another four days of dizziness went by. And it Did was, you still have the migraine as well? No. The migraine The migraine has gone, but the dizziness remained. And where the migraine happens right here, mm -hmm. everything went numb. Jesus. Yeah, like numb, like to the point where I could, yeah, I was flicking my, like to, to show the doctors, I was pinching myself, flicking myself, and my right leg went numb. And um, I am not one to go to the hospital unless I think I'm dying. I have mm -hmm. no health insurance. It's expensive. It's a depressing place, you know. But uh, so I had a migraine for three days, dizziness for four days. And then day five of the dizziness, <laughs> uh, I'm standing in my living room. And I'm just looking around and everything's just not right. And something told me right there, go to the hospital right now. Mm -hmm. So I call 911. I go to the hospital. And when I get there, things start getting a lot worse. So uh, they had me do uh, the sober test that uh, police officers have you do. The walking the, the line. The walk in a straight line. So I'm trying to crack jokes while I'm doing it. So I'm always trying to crack jokes in like serious situations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or yes. Always. Yeah. Or just always. Yeah, just yeah. always. Um, but I can't put one foot in front of the other, and I fall over onto a bed. So then he says, touch your finger to my, your nose and then to my finger. And I'm going, for those not watching, just listening, I hate it when they do that on podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, I could not touch my finger to my no nose and then his finger. So I start crying hysterically. And I don't know why, but everyone in the hospital asks you, why are you crying? You're like, well, for one, I'm in a hospital, so my <laughs> life's not necessarily exactly going great right now. Right. <laughs> like, is this really a question you're asking? Is this a happy place normally? <laughs> right. Am I the first person you see crying here? <laughs> so they get me a bed, and we run a bunch of tests, and I'm just – every test they do that I fail, that I couldn't do correctly, I just start crying again. And then finally I just started telling the truth when they said, why are you crying? And I said, well, it, people usually cry because of the unknown, and we don't know what's wrong with me, and that's scary, and I'm scared. Mm -hmm. And I was, like, sobbing uncontrollably. And – uh so this went on for hours and hours, and they did a CT scan because everyone thought I had um, a stroke, including me. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and then I lost my sense of taste, too, because everything over here was numb. Right. So then they're like, COVID. And I'm like, no, but test me for that, too. Run every test. At this yeah. point, I was not worrying about money. I was making it rain. I'm like, every test you got. Yeah. And I'm crying, and I'm doing the why me, and I'm doing the I'm, I'm so fucking scared. And then 
I told you this is a long story, but this is actually the best part that I was going to get to. This is life changing. Look, I just got goosebumps. This is life changing. And it's one of the craziest things that ever happened to me in my life. But so I'm laying there in my hospital bed all alone. My phone had died. They tried to give me a TV and I was just so confused at that point. I, said, oh, I just pushed it away. I literally just stared at the wall in front of me. Oh, I knew I'd forget some of the story. And I was starting to get confused. Mm. I was repeating myself. Um, <laughs> I kept asking, uh, excuse me, have I peed my panties? <laughs> and they're like, what? And I'm like, did I pee my panties or not? I can't tell. <laughs> And um, just just things like that. I, I kept on repeating people's names because I was trying to remember them. Like the nurse, hi, my name's Rosie. I was like, nice to meet you, Rosie. And then a second later, I'm like, I was getting confused. And that's when I got really scared, when my mm-hmm. brain wouldn't work. Yeah. And then my brain would work, but I couldn't get the words out. Or I'd like, uh, I just kept repeating myself over and over, but I could hear myself mm-hmm. going, I, I know this isn't right. I know I'm fucked up. So, so scared, so sad. And then, so I'm sitting there for hours and uh, <laughs> I just love this part so much. I've told this so many people. So my first thought is, oh, and I kept fainting too mm-hmm. and waking up and fainting. And so I woke up from fainting and I went, yeah, I'm going to die. Like I was for sure not, am I going to die? Oh my God, what's going to happen? I went, you're going to die. And then immediately, my first thought, again, was, why me? I said, uh, damn, it's really sad that I've only had 40 years on this, on this planet in this lifetime. And then this thought, this voice in my head, this whatever, I've never had an absolute thought. Mm-hmm. I think like most people, when you have a thought, you know, then you ruminate it over in your head and you go, maybe it's that, maybe it's this, oh, I'm pretty sure... You know, unless you were to say, like, this tablecloth is black. Right. Something absolute like that. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So less than a second later, I mean, it just went into my head right then and there as absolute as anything that's ever been, I don't know if it was told to me, anything I've ever thought, whatever. Um, It went, yeah, 40 years. You are so fucking lucky. And every moment has been a blessing every moment and I went yeah and then my brain went back to negative town and I went but how depressing to die in a hospital all by yourself and my family doesn't even know where I am and then again within less than a second it said death is only going to be one minute you've had a gazillion minutes and they've all been amazing and that minute will be over and I went (sighs) and I just smiled and a (laughs) <laughs> a peace washed over me that I'd never felt before. Wow. Are you about to cry? <laughs> Maybe. Just, I don't know. I see my, I'm wearing my contacts. Yeah. They're kind of dry. <laughs> and <laughs> it was just the most amazing feeling I had ever felt. Just, death is okay. And we're all afraid of, I mean, I'm definitely afraid of death. And like I said before, I think most of that is the unknown. Mm-hmm. But I'm also afraid of dying. And maybe because, you know, we've seen movies and stuff where people are, I don't want to die. And everyone's going, don't leave me. Or they're going, I'm in so much pain. But really right then and there, it said death will be one minute and then I'll be over. And every other minute has been fucking amazing. And you're so lucky. And a peace and just happiness and just I'd never felt so lucky my entire life laying in that fucking hospital bed going, I'm going to die soon. And that's fine. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know. I've, I've just had a different mind frame since then. I mean, you know, I still have good and bad days yeah. and I still have depression days and stuff. But, like, I just go back to that thought and it's just so true. And it's just, I don't know how I just knew that. Yeah. Or what told me or what. But I was just so comforted and at peace in that moment. And I just sat in that hospital bed and went, going to die. It's all lovely. 
So you didn't die. <laughs> yeah. Clearly. And, and then I didn't die. And then you didn't die. Yeah. So what happened? Like, what was wrong with you? The doctor comes into the room and goes, um, I don't know if you're going to think this is good news or bad news, but all your tests came back normal. Um, the only thing that was a little bit off, which doesn't even count, is like my sodium levels were a little bit off, but that's because, you know, I hadn't eaten in five, six hours. So everything was fine. I didn't have a stroke. They said, your brain is fine. The blood flow to your brain is fine. Everything's fine. And I went, yeah, but I'm not fine. So then my hero, my love, Sherita DeVille shows up. Mm -hmm. So she's trying to reason with them. Like she saw me try to take three steps and fall over. And she's saying, this girl does yoga five days a week, blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> funny part, I remember her standing there arguing with the doctor and I go, hey guys, I feel like I'm standing, but it looks like I'm sitting. Can somebody confirm? <laughs> and she goes, you're going to let her leave in this condition? She's not fine. <laughs> and they're like, there's nothing else we can do. So, uh, Sheree takes me home. I live alone. Um, I don't remember the day after, so I probably slept, but I know the day after that, I went to get an MRI and I was still very confused, very confused. I took an Uber, of course, I can't drive anything. Um, and I remember going there and again, I'm trying to like get my brain to work. So I'm repeating people's names. And I remember I walked in and, uh, the nurse guy said, hi, my name is Pete. Put your purse on this chair and then go right here and sit in this chair and wait for me. Well, I turn, I put my purse in the chair and then I turn around and I'm completely confused. And I just start wandering the hallways of this MRI imaging center, opening doors, going, hi, my name is uh, Leah. <laughs> I almost messed up there. And uh, I don't know where I'm supposed to go or what I'm supposed to be doing. And they're like, oh, ma'am. Come here. <laughs> so I was still very confused, got the MRI. Um, and then I went to an orthopedic surgeon who I know. And basically, long story short, is the bulging disc in my neck bulged out some more. And this is me repeating layman's terms, what the doctor right, told me right. while my brain was sort of working. So it, it's a game of telephone. But yeah. basically what he said was, the disc bulged out more, it impinged a nerve, and then he said, yes, I think he said blood, he could have said oxygen, was probably cut off to that area of your brain mm. for a little bit. And I went, well, whenever I've heard that, that means brain damage. And he said, no, because it's flowing fine now. Um, he said, are you a little confused right now? And I said, yeah. And he said, your brain went through a traumatic event. He said, you know, don't watch flashing things. Don't, you know, like give your brain a break for a few days. I, I can do that. And then he said, to tell you the truth, the exact same thing happened to me when I was 37. And it never happened again. Weird. Uh, yeah. And he said it was the, it was the exact same thing. And uh, he said, so uh, this may never happen again. So I took that as good news. And I said, yeah, that, that one, that's what's going to happen to me. This is never going to happen again. It's just going to be a crazy story. Yeah. And then he said, but if it does, you rush your ass to the hospital as quick as you can, and you rush your ass to a neurologist because then it's brain stuff. Yeah. And every person I've told this story to is like, well, it's, it's going to happen again, and what are you going to do? And I'm like, well, maybe it won't. <laughs> yeah. So I'm hoping it won't, and I feel great now. So, um, I mean, obviously – this whole thing, very scary, like medically, but what an incredibly like crazy mental trip and like emotional experience. Life changing. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, stories like that, it's those moments that give us perspective, which I think are so important yeah. for us because we do get so caught up in like that day to day bullshit, you know, mm -hmm. like the, the, the clients and the you know, every, all the little stupid things that yeah. like, you know, we make into such a big deal. And then when you have those moments of like, wow, like a life and death experience, 
And you're, and, and I love that what came out of that for you was gratitude, because I think that's one of the most important qualities that we can have to, to truly enjoy and, and be happy in our lives. 